Recording is on. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, welcome to the November community chat. Um, this community chat is officially titled, and you can thank Pilot for this one, um, Open Publishing and Why You Should Do It, parenthesis, come to our Flex course in two weeks, exclamation point, close parenthesis. That is the title of it. Um, I, I I dared Pilot to put it in the roundup that way, but um, but yeah, that's that is a Pilot Irwin original. Um, <laughs> and um, really, I mean, yeah, two objectives. Uh, yeah, the closed parentheses are essential. Um, open and close. Um, two kind of things for me is obviously we've got a flex course coming up in uh, two weeks, and we want folks to participate and be there. Um, I have, uh, it's a free flex course, so I'm selling you nothing um, other than your time, I guess, which is important and valuable. Um, but uh, if you are unfamiliar, these are things we do from time to time um, at Reclaim Hosting around various topics. Um, they basically amount to uh, a, we premiere like a video or recording of a video once a week and we have a discussion in our discord around that premiere time but the nice thing is while you can participate um at the premiere time you can also participate throughout the week we want these to be have a synchronous feel but not require synchronous uh participation because we know that's just not going to work for everybody so um really the main thing is uh if you're interested you'll want to go to our events.reclaimhosting.com calendar Click the button and you'll get email updates about it. Um, or you can join Discord because that's where the discussion will be happening. So um, that's the one thing is we want folks to be uh, thinking about that. We want we want you to participate. Um, the other thing is, I like I kind of said a few minutes before we started recording, I'm kind of hoping this could a little bit be story time uh, for, for uh, the community chat. I mean, sometimes our community chats are like that, but really we wanted to kind of try to see if people would share you know what drew you to open publishing in the first place and i guess for the purposes of this community chat i'm really interested in making that publishing word kind of broad i don't know that we need to necessarily limit it to like it could you could talk about oers and that's great but you know even if it's just websites i love hearing about um how people got started with this stuff um and you know what they like about it, what challenges are, what your goals are, those kinds of fun things. Um, but before you know, um, before we get into that, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit more details about the flex course. I guess I'm going to front load it with that. Um, and uh, just because I have now been talking nonstop for like two minutes, I'm going to completely throw it right over to Pilot to uh, kind of, what what is this flex course about? What is it called? So when you said you were going to do this bit, you meant I was going to do this bit. Yep, okay, cool. that's what I meant. I was not informed about this ahead of time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the part where I try and remember what's been said and what's just happened in my brain. And I think it's been said. Um, but yeah, it's going to be happening. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of different types of pub web publishing platforms. Sounds very formal, um, but over the course of a couple of different a couple of weeks, we're going to uh, Taylor and Amanda in particular are going to be sitting down with uh, first to talk through HedgeDoc, um, which is sort of a collaborative markdown uh, application that you can use to write things up in Markdown, and then. You guys got the chance to sit down with um, either makers or power users of the different apps to sort of get a perspective on what each one is really good for. Um, so there's starting in HedgeDoc, but then Doxify and Doxify This with Paul Hibbets, which is for publishing that sort of markdown work that you might do in HedgeDoc. Um, uh, there's Hacks, where you guys are going to be talking to Brian Olendike about uh what that platform looks like and what it's sort of meant to accomplish what the goals there are um what tools it has available um manifold uh which you guys are talking to jojo 
Carlin from NYU? Yep. Yes. And oh boy, there's there's another one. And I'm I'm I've I'm remembering it. I'm totally remembering it right now, and I'm not pulling up the page for no, I got all four of them. Never mind. Nailed yeah, it. You, you got all okay. of them. And that that was that was I'm I'm sorry for for throwing you in it. Yeah. I didn't expect you to go into that much detail, but um yeah, those are brief. the four I see. those are the four platforms and we're highlighting them specifically because they all kind of serve different roles in a space that you could call publishing, but they're all pretty intentionally different. Um, and we're just kind of excited to talk about these different tools, what they're good at, what they're, you know, what, what they would be best suited for and uh, highlight how they can work for you. So uh, Jim, you got your hand raised. Um, yeah, just a simple question. Did you, um, you didn't include press books and I'm just curious, was there, a particular reason other than probably you had four weeks and there's only so much to cover or that would or... be reason honestly one <laughs> it, okay. it is that in that we we which, wanted which is it legitimate to be... you can't cover everything yeah um and the other thing is i think we really wanted to highlight you know these aren't like you know this flex course i think all of our flex courses are supposed to be sort of exploratory right so some of it is we're sharing what we've learned but really in this case because we're bringing these guests in we're trying to learn alongside everyone else who wants to learn with us basically and we think there's a lot of good information out there in press books we ourselves have done many different streams on it and how you can run it and things like that um and there's also because of what press books is you know you can you can find um you know good information from the company that that offers right. it but also you know we're we're obviously i mean like we are probably first and foremost here at reclaim wordpress people so we're also personally most comfortable and familiar with that like what what it can do and things like that so we just wanted to give some air to some of these other tools and what what they can offer um i i fully expect you know we haven't announced um December. the the December community chat um, yet, um, but we we think it will be in some ways kind of a follow on to what we're talking about during that flex course and, and even this one and and um, Pressbooks is going to come up. Pressbooks is going to be compared to all of these tools, and I and I think it should be right. So um, yeah, we're not we're not saying these are the only four tools you should use. Like these are four tools. That I think there's more to there's more of a story to to uncover if that makes sense. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. And the other thing I'm thinking also now is that I remember at least one of the things that we talked about wanting to um, accomplish is to, to, to look at each tool as its own thing, as its own, uh, what the design goals are, what the affordances are, what you can accomplish. Um, and press books, like Taylor was saying, there's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of um, sort of information on what you might use it for and how you might use it. And so, yeah, the ability to look at and explore these tools and then also to say we don't – there's a lot out there for press books. Um, and rather than potentially setting up a situation where we are comparing anything against – the giant it's these are other tools that deserve a moment in the spotlight yeah um so you know uh that being said i'm really kind of excited about that um flux course and you know th these are also kind of two-way things too so i think so as as the sessions come out and folks have questions you know we're more than happy to kind of discuss through like uh, you know, you didn't talk about this in this particular tool or have, you know, has anyone heard of this other thing? I think those conversations will happen and branch out and that's, that's what we want to happen. So cool. Um, yeah. So that's my pitch. Come join our free thing. We want you there. Um, and, um, as a pilot already threw the link in, um, but the, you can sign up on our event calendar, events.reclaimhosting.com. You get an email uh, update about it. 
Um, and that will start up on November 28th is the first premiere. So um, pivoting a little bit to okay. kind of, to kind of um, the, the rest of this community chat. I, yeah, I think pilot and I are particularly really interested to hear from folks like what, what drew you to this space in general? I obviously our flex course is kind of um, geared towards publishing in the, the context of, you know, OERs and things like OERs. Um, I don't want to limit it completely, but I think, um, you know, for this chat, we're kind of interested in like open web stuff in general um, and, and what got people here. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see if people will share, like, I guess starting out. Yeah. What drew you to publishing openly on the web in the first place? Um, and I guess there's a lot of, that's a big question, a lot of directions to go, but um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Pilot, do, do you, can you share what, like, what was, like, what's your first website or first thing you helped publish as a website? Oh you boy. Recall. Um, See now I'm going trying to go through like okay first website or first publishing and this this is the sort of totally unhelpful dichotomy. Um, I remember that when I was in college, there was a uh, tech club. I don't really it wasn't really a tech club. I don't totally understand what their mission was, but somehow I ended up on their newsletter, and they had a. Uh, night that was just here's a workshop we'll show you how to get set up html flat file and put it on github pages um and i'd done some html css work uh for computer science software engineering classes things like that um but that was the first sort of independent project that I ever put up. Um, and then in terms of publishing, that was something I got more familiar with when I started working with Domain of One's Own and Digital Humanities at Carleton. Um, and I learned about Scalar. And I didn't do too much work with the platform of Scalar itself. Um, but I worked a little bit with one of the librarians who was helping a lot of faculty members with their Scalar sites and helping them think through how they wanted to put out those books, essentially. Um, but I actually didn't do a whole lot with open publishing as a concept in my head until I came to Reclaim. Um, I didn't know press books existed before that. Um, which is crazy. Uh, I, the first like real project that I can think of was um, working with SNC sort of on the um, domains camp thing, which is kind of an open publishing. It absolutely thing. is. Yeah, okay. we're going to use it as an example. Some of the content is an example, actually. Oh, in perfect. The course. Great. <laughs> so, yeah. Then I said that on purpose. It's all planned. Cool. Yeah, for, you know, um, I, I have a kind of a similar uh, thing. I would say, like, my, my first website was, uh, so I should say, like, I, I've been, like, um, like, I feel like growing up when I, like, growing up when I did, the age that I am, like, the web was kind of, like, when I was really young, there was a lot of talk like at least in my school about like what the web is and isn't because it was kind of new still like very new. Um, so there was a lot of like how to be safe, but also I even remember like in elementary computer classes, our teachers like describing like, this is what a server is, not the technicals, but just like what that means and, and stuff like that. And I, I kind of wonder constantly, honestly, about like the state of that type of, like, I feel like in a lot of ways, a lot of the things I do now is still like I can draw a line all the way back to like 
fifth grade computer class <laughs> and and like learning about like what is a browser and what is a search engine this was like when google was like new kind of well not that new i guess at that point but somewhat new um and but i didn't really like you know make my own website i didn't even think i had the tools or skills i didn't really i thought it was something only like programmers could do basically um until um college and i got a uh, I got a Raspberry Pi in, there used to be these Reddit gift exchanges and you would just get like signed up with a completely random stranger. I don't remember what I got for the person, but the person on the other end got me a ra the original Raspberry Pi and I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't really know much about Linux or anything. Um, and I was just kind of reading like, what can you do with this? And one of the things is you could set up a uh, Apache web, ser web server and WordPress. And so I did just to see, like, I just followed the instructions and it was crazy slow. Like those original Raspberry Pis were not <laughs> really capable of even a empty WordPress site at that time because it, it just was too much for that. Um, but I set it up and I had it plugged in in my parents' basement, plugged into their router, and I just started playing with it. And I didn't ever, ever do too much with it, but that was technically my first web, web site and then i didn't really return to that until years later basically um after i had graduated college and um got a little bit more interested in other web stuff but um that was my first website and it was um it uh it, it worked you could visit it technically uh probably not that many people though could visit it even if they knew about it oh i don't think i had a domain mapped either i think it was just an ip address um so that was technically my first website. And then, yeah, I got very involved with Domain of One's Own at St. Norbert College when I worked there, and now I work at Reclaim. So that's that's kind of my journey. Um, it, but um, it was kind of revealing to me, even though getting it working on a Raspberry Pi was, like, hard. I learned a lot from doing it, but also it wasn't, it wasn't that hard. It was just following instructions. And I was like, oh, like, you don't really... I don't know what I thought a website really was, but it's not that complicated was kind of the revelation for me. I had a lot of exposure to non-open web uh, things and non-open resources, um, not publicly available at least. Um, but I wrote an entire, I used to be a Mac admin at a you know, previous career and I used to write a ton of documentation for our end users on a uh, Mac OS server wiki, which is super awesome. Um, if you, 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 no one will ever have the chance again to do that. But if you, if you spin up a, an X serve and put Mac OS server from like the 10, four, 10, five days on it, then you can experience the joys of Mac OS wiki and Mac OS server wiki. And, um, yeah, that was just my <clears throat> the, the first documentation I ever wrote. But since then, I work at St. Norbert now. Uh, <clears throat> Taylor turned me on to the internet, I like to say. Um, you should check this out. I, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's pretty great, <laughs> Taylor said. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I was like, oh, everything's just a file. This is just like working on Macs. And that was a big green light for me. But uh, I, I have a lot. I, I have a long way to go. That's why I'm here and I'll probably be enjoying that workshop that Taylor talked about earlier. So, yeah. I wrote a bubble sort in Fortran on an IBM 360. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> so I stuck with my first career choice and became a glass blower and spent 20 years working in Santa Clara, California, um, supporting computer manufacturing, and would often go to some programmer or engineer's house with my little six pack of beer, and they would show me the latest and greatest. My favorite was the purple translucent Mac desktop thing, the giant jelly bean thing. And so as would always happen, we would open a couple of beers and watch the little thing go around and um, 
Oh, and in between then, I wrote a, I can't even remember, something. It was follow the instructions. I wrote a program on an IBM PC in 1983 when I was thinking about being an engineer, but went back to glass blowing. Um, and so, and didn't enjoy that. And then I spent a lot of evenings watching that little circle go around. Even in Santa Clara, you know, dial up was slow and, um, and watching it, you know, it'd be so then, okay, we're online. Great. What's it doing now? Oh, now it's downloading the program. Oh, okay. And then when the six pack was finished, I'd have to go home because I had to go to work the next day. And so I'm not really that impressed <laughs> with, um, you know, the whole, um, uh, computer thing, but I, now have spent an inordinate amount of time the last 10 years trying to figure it out as a user. So I come at it as a ignorant user person. Um, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm all signed up for the course because I have this project that I am a complete failure at for, I think seven or eight years now, um, that I have tried to figure out how to, um, construct a, and it's evolved over the years, so it's either gotten simpler or more complex, depending how you look at it. But um, I'm interested in e-portfolios for lifetime learners, and so that uh, workers um, and poor people and even uh, prisoners can document their learning, um, whether they go to go to Harvard or not. And um, so now I'm to the point where, and again, for years I've been chasing this idea. Um, I think I want a graph database because of the relations you can create. And I have an Omeka S installation that I bray or fool around with once in a while on reclaim that, uh, will tag all your objects as you put them into the graph database. And, you know, there are standards, RDF triples and different standards you can use, uh, Dublin core, you know, and these, these are in Omeka. And then now recently, I'd like to be able to publish flat archivable pages on top of all that. And there's several steps in between I'm forgetting about. Um, oh, and then I'm also interested, as I know Chris is, in note taking and linking all that together. So I'm trying to build a memex, I guess is what it is. And you guys are going to help me, right? We hope. I mean, I, I, I think uh, I think the the thing that I'm kind of excited about again with the the flex course is how like I I've had one of when we were talking to the the guests for this, they were like, why why this tool next to you know say manifold like why docs they're very different. I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, like we one of the I think one of the exciting things is how different these tools can be <clears throat> will hopefully cover more use cases. And we're trying to draw lines between them in ways that are logical. Like one of the things that we want to do is take like a single markdown document that we make and run it through all of these tools. And just so like, this is what that looks like when you use these three very different tools to look at this one singular piece of content, basically. Um, but you know, that, um, obviously we want to keep it, you know, relatable to like in, in terms of as much as I like, you know, web technologies for the sake of them in some cases, that's not that useful. <laughs> so we're also trying to, you know, ground it in like, well, you know, when would be the best case to use this type of thing? Is this something that an individual user can benefit from? Is this better as like an institutional tool that can be accessed by multiple people will, you know, answer those kinds of questions as well. Here's where I get to say, I've never been institutionalized. So, um, you know, I'm trying to do this for free mm -hmm. so that I can give it away for free. Um, and I work with, I do work with some institutions, um, uh, a graduate institute in Berkeley specifically. Um, and so I'm, I've, again, for years, I've failed to move this e-portfolio concept into their program, but now a crack is open. So maybe some light will come in. Well, um, and, and 
I think we'll be able to kind of meet that too in in at least one of the tools. You know, Doxify this is one of the tools, and that one is t- you know technically depending on your needs requires zero hosting, like not even hosting. And I know we're a hosting company, <laughs> right? But uh, you're in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, um, but that is kind of the one of my favorite things is, about this course is we can go from like oh, this is only possible on Reclaim Cloud because of all the power you have there to like, you don't even need to host this depending on what your needs are. Um, so, you know, uh, that hopefully we'll have something for you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and that's, and that's great because I am concerned with portability because I talk to a lot of <clears throat> now teachers that used to be students. And as soon as you leave your institution, yep, you know, all your stuff is gone. Unless you've carefully archived it, and who teaches archiving? Yeah. It's like teaching somebody what a you know. I work with like older students and older people. They don't know what a browser is. They use it every day. They don't know what it is. You know, and they don't know where it is in the layers of technology. And now that we're doing this stuff, I show. I have a little diagram. There's like ten layers right now, and I show it to you know people, and they're just like, "What's that?" You know. And and we're on Zoom. I'm showing it to them on Zoom. I'm like, this is what we're doing, you know. And then mm-hmm. they don't know. Yeah, just... and it's it's an interesting, you know, problem in that. Like, I personally feel so strongly about like, you know, if if we can get people to understand what those layers are, and they don't have to understand every technical. I don't understand every technical. No, piece, nobody does. Just that but, they're there, but that they exist, right? And that can be so valuable. But you do have to hook people, right? Like if you're starting from a point of like you don't understand any of the layers or that they exist, to start right with let's peel this technological onion isn't that attractive to most yeah, people. No. <laughs> so no. it's kind of like, yeah, I want you to learn because you'll be better off if you learn certain things about this before you embark on your project. But at the other hand, like there's definitely a place for tools where it's like, you know what, just start here. <laughs> and you don't really need to know, at least at the onset, how it all works yet. And we'll we'll get you there. Because ob- obviously, like, my answer to everything is like, well, what if we explained it to people and it was, you know, that people could learn about it. But th- there are sometimes you need a, a on-ramp to that, I think. Yeah, I tried the history of computing. That didn't work. <laughs> I find it fascinating, but. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think what intrigues me is what you just. Your sound is low and now you're frozen. Yeah. Uh, so is it his browser? Is it his operating system? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Could be a million things. Is internet connection? So. I knew Chris was cool, but I didn't think he was frozen. <laughs> that's that's the coolest, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, heard you. Yep. There was a sound. Oh, am I back? Yes. yes. Okay. So maybe it's just my camera just is having issues today. Um, I, I think what interests me the most is being able to bring a load of my data to a space and point tools at it to see what affordances those tools give me. So the way Taylor framed it as we're going to bring the same group of things to each of these to see what happens. To me, that's the interesting thing. And quite often I find with a lot of these tools, I have needs or uses for them that they'll allow me to use them for what I want to, often in off-label use cases. So being able to use them in ways that the builders did not intend them to is often where a lot of the fun things happen. Or what can I take this tool and add a layer on top of it and get something else out of it, whether that's interactivity or how can this tool talk to other tools? Um, you know, and it, those things have 
gradually increased over the years from the time when I was, you know, I, you know, I think my first website was roughly 1992 and I was writing raw HTML in all caps, if th that even is like a thing. Um, but I was also doing that at a time when I was running a movie theater and hanging out late at night with the newspaper right next door that was usually going to bed just as we were getting out of the projection booth. Um, so quite often I was going halfway across town with a friend with a massive disc so that they could, you know, plug it in at the printer and run off copies of their newspaper to pick up the next morning. Um, and so seeing the old school mesh with new internet methods um, was phenomenally interesting to me. And in an hour and a half, actually, I'm going to be on a conference call with one of the senior tech leads at the, the Washington Post, who also had kind of that same background in both physical publishing and then in uh, early in his career, the web was growing up at the same time because we're, I think, within a year of each other. Um, so it's interesting to see that how those things play together. And he's always playing with fun new tools that you know, hey, how can how can the Washington Post or the newspaper I'm working at today or the magazine use these tools to do the next big thing? Um, and hopefully the barrier for entry goes down because, you know, things like, hey, yes, I, I could spin up my own instance of, you know, press books is a thing, I could do that, but do I really want to? Because the amount of administrative overhead is n not worth the end result. You know, it's like press book sitting on my shoulder, picking at you know my shirt with claws. Like, <laughs> what, do I need that kind of admin? Or and is it worth it for the the purring cuddles that I might get later on? <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, and I think one of the things that I really like about perhaps selfishly, I don't know, um, but about doing exploring these types of things in community chats, flex courses, like working at Reclaim and, and it being a Reclaim hosting thing is we get to, we have the kind of the privilege to try to look at it from well, A, we get to be transparent about like, well, why are we interested in this? We're like, well, we're a hosting company, so so maybe you host it with us, <laughs> right? Like, don't have to, but you could. Um, but but also trying to simplify and make cheaper, easier, faster, better, whatever, all of the tools from all angles, right? So, you know, we, we recently did, uh, I think it was about a month ago, um, it was Pilot and Amanda and I did a stream talking about like, how to manually just set up a Pressbook site. And that was on, we showed it on shared hosting and Reclaim Cloud. You know, we're, we've been talking about a little bit about a new product that we're going to have um, in the next couple months or so called Reclaim Press. And you could do it there too. And, <clears throat> you know, that's to simplify that complex thing. Is it going to be as simple as um, a static HTML final server? Probably never. <laughs> like I, I, you know, if you understand that you can have a website by writing a single file, that's pretty simple. It's also very limited in certain ways. But, um, but I also think there's movement to make that stuff simple too. And maybe it's you know understanding it better, or maybe it's eliminating the need to d deal with FTP or whatever. You know, or uh, making that kind of stuff simpler. And I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just really interested in that. And I think all of these tools that we're going to showcase try to make th something simple. They, they focus on different things and simplifying different things and la even layers, right? Like is the hosting simple or is the interface simple or both in some cases? Um, and that, that's kind of one of the things that I'm most excited about with really all of these tools, but they, they all look at it. The problem, I think they identify the problem differently.
Well, <clears throat> I guess to the best I can shorten uh, a long career <laughs> in this. And the, the simple part of the first half of my career, I was not in academia. I was uh, spent about 20, 25 years. I was in corporate planning and um, similar kinds of functions in the corporate world. A whole lot of it was started out with NCR, which at one time was a com second biggest computer company in the country. And then uh, I ended up in the Force Products, uh, paper publishing, all that kind of stuff for a long time. And I ended up with a niche um, as a consultant and other stuff of, uh, I was kind of like the, there's some new technology coming along and the corporate, you know, the suits wanted to know what the heck this was going to mean for the future and all kinds of stuff. And nobody understood it. And it was all kind of, you know, give it to Jimmy, he'll figure it out. And I would always go, yeah, sure. I, I, sure. I, I can do that. And then I would dive in because I didn't know I have a clue. Um, so I came at things. Of, of first, so actually, my first experiences with publishing actually would go back and I would describe what was going on in corporate world in the late 70s and had some parallels in that, you know, back in those days, you couldn't write if you worked in corporate or worked in business. You couldn't write and publish your own documents because it had to go through. There was a department called the word processing department or the weighing. And you had to go through word weighing word processing specialists because, you know, these typewriters with memories were too complex for humans to work unless they were, you know, you had to go through the specialists. And anyway... So moving forward, around 2002, I gave up on that world, moved into academia, and started teaching online. And started, you know, since I understood a little bit about how the web worked, but I've always hated the coding end. Uh, let me <laughs> let me tell you, a dyslexic ADD guy ain't exactly your best idea for for dealing with code. <laughs> um, but I started taking my own coursework and um, putting it in static web files and figured out web hosting and different stuff. And uh, one thing led to another. And then I decided, oh, I wanted to figure out what this blog stuff was on. And that was about the time when the great financial crisis hit. I, I'm an economist. And I got tired of bringing copies of class stuff to class. Uh, with all the news. And so I thought, oh, well, I'll just start a word, you know, I'll, I'll learn WordPress at the same time um, as I, I'm figuring out, oh, that way I don't have to make copies for students. I can just link to it on the web. And that was working fine for a few months. And then a piece of magic happened. I wrote a blog post about whether general, I'm in Detroit about whether General Motors was going to file bankruptcy or not. At that point, there was a lot of speculation that, no, they would never want to do that. And I analyzed from an economist's point of view, I'll save you the long story, and I said, no, here's the, the debt committee structured this way. It's going to happen. Here's why. And it was the kind of thing an economist would love, nobody else. And somebody... Uh, an economist um, pretty high up, somebody saw my blog post. I had no idea it was on WordPress. They saw it. They linked to it and said, hey, this is pretty interesting stuff. And next thing I knew, you know, I was used to looking and going, oh, it's pretty cool. Eight people saw my post yesterday or that kind of thing. And then one day I woke up and, oh, my God. 800 people saw my post and they weren't all from the U S and that was like, Oh, wow. A community college prof. And I was hooked. And from that point on, it's 
you know, I started moving into the OER stuff at school, but my obsession's been with how do we get rid of the gatekeepers? How do we make this stuff so simple, so straightforward that people can, in fact, publish and talk? And and that's interesting because that what happens, what I've observed, and this is why I'm interested in this flux course, because I'm not that familiar with these four texts. I've seen this, for example, with WordPress. It started out real simple. And now, oh, you know, everybody wanted to make it. You know, it's like the coders and the designers got a hold of it over a decade. And now it's not simple anymore. And now, oh, it's a big barrier to folks just writing something and getting it up. You know, because now it's got to be here and you got to have, you know, you can't just do a HTML page anymore type stuff because it's got to have blocks and all that crap and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, I'm interested in seeing all the possibilities. So that's long and along the lines there. I set up a press books install for uh, Lansing Community College, so and help some other faculty. So that's how I got here. And it's, it's my radical democratize the whole thing. I, I'm I'm here for that, and I think the thing that I don't know maybe obvi maybe obvious thing to point out, but here I am pointing it out, uh, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> the thing I guess that I see all the time working at a hosting company is democratizing it or simplifying it for whom, right? And so often I go to the individual, like I want someone, just a person, don't care where you are, have a thing on the internet. Let's just like that simple go there and then maybe one step from that is like okay how simple could they publish a thing but they have their own domain name because domain names are great but you have to register them and pay for them and 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 all this stuff right which is not that hard we try to hopefully make that easy you know at reclaim but and and answer questions and stuff but um but ultimately like you know there's there's more there but what I see a lot too, like working in a hosting company and I, is like, sometimes that's the wrong, well, not sometimes it's the wrong target, but, but there are other audiences, right? Like I'm also really interested in seeing like, well, how can we doc democratize and enable people who are working at a school to help people with this? That's right. Obviously like that's okay. That's domain of one's own basically, but there is more than one way to that. Like that's domain of one's own solves a problem but there are other ways to slice that problem up, right? Like, well, what if we're not really here to teach about this, but we just want a way for people to publish? Okay, great. You know, maybe that's press books. Maybe that's, we'll talk about Manifold, you know. Um, the the trouble, I think, with all this stuff is that there's just so many, well, I shouldn't say it's not the only trouble, but one problem is there's so many options, right? Like there's so many directions you can go, so many tools to choose from. And um, half of them are proprietary and locked down. And, and I would say don't bother, but there's information about those two and you have to wade through the sea of it. And it's not that, you know, this flux course will, <laughs> you know, unilaterally fix that. Of course it won't. But um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm interested in talking about tools in a different way than if you go look up like what's better for X versus Y, you'll find a lot of like, maybe like engineering stuff or just like, oh, you have to use this programming language for, okay, I don't really care about that, um, you know, and oh, well, this is better for this pricing model. It's like, okay, I don't really care about that either. I'm kind of more interested in talking about what tools fit individual or group needs better. And of course, there is information about that, but I don't know, I find it harder to find and I find it harder to find discussion around that personally. Yeah, I, I feel like then you basically said what I wanted to happen and say, especially sitting in this position of 
needing to support people. Like there's a reason that we just keep going back to WordPress. It's like, we all know it really well. I have students that know it really well. And it meets the needs of like most things, even if it's maybe sometimes overkill for what somebody needs, you know? And so, but I, I, I the kind of the reason I'm interested in seeing these things, I, it's like, I know personally, I just need to have more tools in my uh, arsenal. I don't know of like, you know, feeling comfortable to actually suggest those things in those moments but th there's still like the hesitation of like well when it, when it goes wrong like i know most wordpress things at this point it's like when it goes wrong i'm not stressed <laughs> about getting those things done it's it's the experimental like you know and i think luckily for us at least domain of one's own is couched is mostly an experimental teaching space so like i'm not expected to maintain infrastructure here right uh that like people like want uptime uh in the same way but yeah how do I don't know how to like I'm very curious to see hacks because it's like too that this like lightweight kind of ish thing it feels like WordPress sometimes like I don't know people need a single page to do something and I'm like I don't know do you need all WordPress <laughs> to, to do that but then I don't want to send them off to like I have to send them off to like simple web page builders I'm like I don't know maybe it makes more sense to go use Canvas single page splash page thing because it's really fancy and it does things and you don't have to do all this work uh I don't know, there was a thread I was going to pull from what you said earlier. <laughs> now I've kind of, kind of lost it, but I, I don't know if people have this, um, wrestled with this in the same way, like too, but uh, I always have added complications. Like now I have to teach my students how to do, because if it's incorporated in the classroom and faculty wants to do it, now I need to make sure my students who help other students know how to do it. And it becomes yet another, <laughs> another thing like a Mecca. We can, I can't, like, I don't even have any expectation that my students really know a Mecca outside. Here's the guide for the troubleshooting things that always happen, <laughs> you know, like with the images and things like that. So I don't know. I was kind of a ramble, but. <laughs> well, you know, one of the selfish reasons, another selfish reason that we did this community chat here is that I'm taking notes, of course, and trying to, I'm going to say collect problems <laughs> or, you know, not that we'll be able to solve or address all of them, but like for, for full transparency, like, we haven't recorded any of these sessions yet. They're about to be, and they're guests on them. So we're going to focus on what they want to talk about first. But one of the things I'm interested in throughout this is to try and say like, okay, like like what I just wrote down from what you just said, Shannon, is like a common problem. And because this is one I ran into too, is like, I just want a single page website. And I agree, there isn't really a good tool for that. <laughs> Not that I've used regularly. I think hacks actually could potentially and doxify this could be an interesting one too but um like my ultimate like if i had to invent a tool into existence and i didn't have to make it myself it would be like a literal one page cms <laughs> where it's just like you name you you make the index.html file and you click edit and you can type it in there yes. and then you hit save and that's it and I want to and make it pretty too. It's like that's the yes. biggest thing. Is there's like right, yeah, we could put up an HTML page, but you now need to know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I yeah. I want the simplicity of static HTML, but with like it would look yes. good and have a WYSIWYG editor, of course. Yeah, I, um, that is exactly it. Because always with the, all this, I I've been interested in all this those like static sites, but then you got to know Markdown and you yep. need to do it like. I'm like, no, I don't want to know this. I want to. I want. I want like a Squarespace, basically, right? You know, in some ways, it's like could jump in, sit in there, do the things, make it pretty, put in my information and done. Yeah, Hi. and and I, we're I'll just like, none of the the four tools we're gonna talk about completely directly do that, but mm -hmm. there kinda is, sort of. Uh, like, we'll we'll talk about it, but like, you know, that that um, that is one for me that I wish, you know, like the, even if we could, if we could smush the two cPanel tools together, the like, site builder one where it just ends up with like a template and then the fact that in cpanel there's an editor there is a WYSIWYG html editor but it yeah. is of course like no style information so no. it's not really that useful um in, in the whole scheme of things that's what i want personally but it's it's also a little bit you know when you examine these things it's a little bit harder easier said than done in some ways i think hacks is honestly close to that but even that is kind of conceived as more of like a tool for making other little sites inside of it right so it's not yeah. completely what you are saying 
but um, I will say I have a GitHub issue on hacks that that's literally like, could this be a single page thing? <laughs> and they're kind of like, that would be cool, but not right now, <laughs> you know, um, which is fair enough. It's just not what yeah. that tool's directly for, but yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. Who, who has the millions of dollars to invest in somebody just doing this for us? <laughs> right. Cause I think that thing is that this tool that like in pilot just shared one, this tool exists, but not in an open source way. Right. Like yeah. you can, right. It's always in that, like you got to pay. And I want to, I want it to be an option I can give students that they don't have to pay for um, that. I can also get in and help them <laughs> with the things. So, oh yeah. Uh, Chris just shared, I, I have used HTML5 up um, for things like, which is actually kind of where I point people to if they want to do HTML and CSS, JavaScript things. I'm like, go grab this template and edit it, and then I'll show you how to upload it to your file manager. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, because that's that's one way to do it too. Like, start with something somebody's already made, and then edit to what your your needs are. But that that seems like a big lift for a lot of students, unless that's what they're actually really particularly interested in is like get learning to the code. Yeah, I, I will say like the H I I can third that idea. HTML five up is awesome. That's kind of yeah. like it's so much easier to look at something and edit it. Like that was the game changer yes. for me when I looked at HTML yeah. because mm -hmm. like I before then had approached HTML as if it was a programming language, and I was like, I'm not a programmer. <laughs> like I'll just never know that. It's fine. Um, and and then I looked at it and I was kind of like, oh, looking at this completed thing, I can kind of see what's happening here. And you can, of course, edit it, change it, break it, you know, that's all great. But I agree, it's not quite the, it's not removing all the barriers you would want it to remove. Um, but, no, yeah. Yeah. It's I've, a good teaching, I've, teaching tool, but not necessarily like, hey, whole class, we're all going to build websites. Like, yeah. I, like, unless the faculty member, their goal is to teach HTML, CSS. It's like, no, nobody wants that. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've long wanted to, and I wonder if this would be even easier now with, with WordPress, uh, with the way the block editor works, of making a WordPress template that, like, is a one pager WordPress site. And it's kind of weird because you're taking this tool that's designed for so much more and narrowing it down to like, okay, when you sign in, you're gonna like get on the page edit. Like, I, I don't I don't even, I've never gone through and done it, but it seems possible to me to like, okay, well we'd set up like a very basic thing and have a homepage, you know, not a blog roll on the, or not a list of blog posts on the homepage. And then like, maybe I can come up with some way so that when you sign in, you get dropped right into the page editor. Yeah. I don't know. There may be a way to do that. But, but then it's like, okay, well now like I've simplified this, the starting of this tool, but then what about when they want a second page and they kind of don't know anything about how WordPress works yeah. and how are they supposed to figure it out now? You know? So I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard yeah, problem. I I, this is, it's funny you say this because I literally kind of just did, I kind of dropped a link in the, the chat, did this where I needed to make a demo portfolio for this presentation we're going to do. And I, I um, Anders Noren, who makes a bunch of themes that are beautiful, also does block themes now too. And like this default theme like has like is laid out kind of just like the, the front page is, I, I didn't even make a page. I actually just edited the, the themes front page template and got this like in, didn't do any other ender other work, but it's like I see more and more theme developers kind of doing that, it's like making that front page kind of its own like already designed thing. And you don't even I was like I could not even ever add any more content and do it almost right in there, especially if I was linking to other places. And then I'm just using the theme, the editing thing. It just felt it was like I was like, okay, like I had to like let go of the WordPress and be like, actually it works for this this really well. Um to get like that design piece that a lot of times people are really looking for. You could do that on pages and stuff, but like doing it within the template lets you fully control. I mean, that comes with its own problems because if you build out your site and you all oh, that's what you've done, that's not best practice, but that's all you need. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it worked pretty well. Like I made that, that, that little thing in like in 30 minutes. <laughs> it was like really simple to do. Yeah. Um, and it looks nice, right? <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> and the, you know the advantage then too is again if it if it if you are using WordPress then the sky's the limit from there too, yeah. right? So that has its advantages too. Um 
I don't know. I we think have, very circularly. I, I always think myself in a circle on things like this. Yeah. We have two minutes left. So now's the perfect time for me to introduce a new thing that uh, just tailor what you put in the chat and what we've been talking about with um, Chris. Uh, uh, HTML5 up and card and stuff that you can bring to people and slots and stuff you can bring to people to just get them started thinking about open publishing for an individual versus for a group. Um, and going back to why you might want press books or why press books might be overkill. One of the things is that press books is at its core, a WordPress multi-site. So it's designed to have lots of users who can collaborate on lots of sites. But if what you want is I'm the only person who's really going to be working on this and I want someone to be able to, you know, fork it and do their own thing on it, but not, they're not going to touch, they're not going to touch my work. They're going to take my work and build their own thing off of it. Pressbooks is not, it, it has features for that, but it's way more than you need. But the idea of scope is not quite the word that I want, but what does a student need whose students making their own an open tool for a student putting their stuff out versus faculty or institutional or group or individual projects i don't have a thesis this is just a top discussion topic for the last for the last seconds. negative yeah the last 30 <laughs> seconds of this time of our time i have to uh, run to a um uh, digital storytelling class. Mm -hmm. um, but I did want to ask if anybody's been playing with AI and asking it after having a chat, asking it to outline the chat, and then asking it to uh, take the outline and convert it to markdown, and then taking the markdown and dropping it into a concept mapping tool. And you can do all that in about five minutes. Um, so, and as you said, Taylor, it's much better when you've got the markdown in front of you to then edit it. And if you if you have a tool where you can visualize it, then you can go back and edit it really, because I'm not a programmer, even though I did write a Fortran program on an IBM 360. Anyway, I got to run. Thanks for this and I'll see you in class. Thanks. Yeah, um, Chris, Blot is so cool to me. Um, it's not something I've explored a lot, but I've, I've looked at it more than once and been like, yeah, I want this. Um, but I can't remember is blot one of the ones that is, has a self hostable version or not, but, um, there's a couple tools that are kind of similar, like take a folder of files and make it a website. And I want to say one of them had a self hostable version, but it was so early. They were like, don't use this yet. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Their source code is on GitHub. Okay, maybe it was blocked. Maybe it's yeah, come some sure page. Um, um, but it, it's easy enough that you know most of the simple editors like Google Docs will let you, you know, edit it and save it, and then suddenly there's your page. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at the lot right now yeah that that may be something to be interesting to see how you know how easily that could be run um but um yeah i will say i, I think um google docs's publish button is possibly underrated there's so many problems with it like like in terms of you don't own the url and all this stuff right but um it's amazing to me like especially having worked um in k-12 briefly like how much use that thing including myself at that time how much use that button got and it's like yeah i'm going to publish this google doc as a web page it's like if i could do that and map it to a domain easily that would that would work for a lot of people um with all of the caveats and problems it has that it, okay now it's a google doc and not something that you you know really own but yeah, yeah. Now I'm thinking. I don't like Google Sites. <laughs> I hate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I when we when Carlson picked up Domain of One's Own, one of the things that we did was we moved uh, not all, but a lot of the WordPress sites that we had in WordPress multi-site 
to um, Domain of One's Own. And that worked because, you know, WordPress is open source and you can install it onto cPanel and things like that. But we also got people going, oh, will you bring in my Google Sites site? And we had to go. Not even Google can do that. They have no. two copies. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, if you copies. want to set up WordPress and copy paste all of your content and rebuild your site and make it look nice, then sh you can do that. But we're not. Google Sites drives me crazy. As far as I can tell, like, especially Google Sites drives me crazy as a person who's been doing more with flattening and archiving recently too. As far as I can tell, the new Google Sites is intentionally designed so that it could never be archived because the way it loads in content just doesn't, it, it's it's like a hack. It's bizarre. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wish, I mean, I think the experience of using Google Sites is not bad. But I, as a like citizen of the web, I'm I get so mad at it. <laughs> so, well, we're a couple minutes early, or a couple minutes over. Sorry, not early. Um, but um, as always, I really appreciate the conversation and everyone showing up. So we'll have uh, we'll have a recording up soon, and hope to see everyone at the um, in the Discord or at the Flex course. So. Bye.